Dewey Black Cobra Cooper pulls no punches in the ring or out. I'm not some new guy jumping the K-1 bandwagon. I paid my dues. I fought a lot of tough guys. I just want to beat you, man. I just want to beat you and go to the next guy, go to the next guy, win the tournament. As simple as that. In his first K-1 tournament appearance last May here at the Mirage, Cooper took out Jean-Claude Loyer by unanimous decision, despite giving up 33 pounds to his opponent. Then in a semifinal round, he dropped a close decision to six-time kickboxing world champion Rick Rufus. I got somewhat of a moral victory in that fight just because I was in there with him. He's knocked a lot of guys out. He's knocked out more guys than I've fought. Tonight, Cooper faces a man with devastating knockout power and unmatched focus, Japan's Yasuki Fujimoto. At 27 years of age, Fujimoto has been compared to Mike Tyson because of the aggressive manner in which he hunts down his opponent. My fight is all about athletic ability and rising to that moment, you know, being in harmony, and uh, hopefully I'll be in harmony uh, May 2nd. Matter of fact, I know I'll be in Harmony uh, May 2nd. It's on. And now coming to the ring in the blue corner, Yusuke Fujimoto! This is K1 quarterfinal match number two. Three three minute rounds. When the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action, Cecil Peoples. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red and weighing 237 pounds. He comes to us from Japan with 10 victories, including six knockouts against four defeats. He's the Monster Challenge Champion in the K-1 Japan Grand Prix 2003 third place finalist, ladies and gentlemen, Yusuke Fujimoto! <laughs> and his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with white letters and weighing 202 pounds from right here in Las Vegas, Nevada, USA. This K-1 veteran has a record of 27 victories, including 17 KOs with four defeats and one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, the Black Cobra, Dewey Cooper. Remember that, no clenching whatsoever. You hold a knee, one knee only. 
Any question from the red corner? Sir. Any question from the blue corner? Let's dance. All right, ready for quarterfinal number two, tail of the tape. Well, Dewey, Black Cobra Cooper has three inches on Fujimoto, but he's given up some weight, both about 27, 26 years old. Should be a good one here from the Mirage Bench Center. Here we go, round number one, three three-minute rounds. Quarterfinal number two, this K-1 enter the Beast Knight. Dewey Cooper with his trademark top knot and samurai style on top of his head, the more experienced of the two fighters. 30 fights against about 15 for Fujimoto. Neither fighter having progressed too far into the Grand Prix in previous years, although Dewey Cooper last year here at the Mirage, a stunning victory over Loyer early rounds before losing to Rick Rufus in the semifinal. Here. Cecil Peoples, our referee in charge tonight, boosting the action. No knockdown. Fujimoto, though, Let's go. with a message to Dewey Cooper. Well, I think we're going to see a contrast in style. Fujimoto is the karate fighter. He's going to try for power blows. And Dewey is the boxer, kickboxer. He's also undefeated with seven fights in boxing right now. So he's training with Jeff Mayweather. Cooper's Don't landed a couple of good punches. Fujimoto just shook him off. Yeah. You know, good point, Duke, because Fujimoto oh, is up? much more traditional oh, in his delivery of techniques. Saito Kaikan, student out of Japan. Dewey Cooper, although traditional Kempo, third-degree black belt, is trained almost strictly in Muay Thai for a number of years now. Well, Dewey Cooper was just a, a sidebar for so long at a lot of these K-1 events. Finally worked his way into the big show, as you mentioned, last year with a terrific performance. Earned him a repeat performance here in Vegas in the K-1 tournament. Well, in the, in the pre-fight interviews, I had a nice discussion with him. He says he's more focused than he's ever been, and he's very mature. I'd like to see him get going a little more. He's not active enough in this first round. Oh, he's fought enough in Las Vegas, his hometown, in front of his friends. I wouldn't think that's going to be too much of a nerves factor. No, not Dewey. He's flamboyant. He's a great showman out here. Beautiful, that damn. Another one. That's three. Cooper's landed. He's doing his community service. <laughs> Big round kick by Fujimoto. A lot of power, but blocked by both hands by Cooper. Good thing, too. Chucking it from the cheap seats and Dewey took advantage of it. Oh boy, that left hand that has been the bread and butter for Dewey Cooper in round number one. That was a very short left hand, easy to miss. You've got to credit Cecil Peoples as the referee for picking up that, that punch. It was very difficult to see. Fujimoto's got to work on that alleyway to the jaw. A good first round for Dewey, the Black Cobra Cooper. Fujimoto's got some reworking to do with his strategy in the corner. the entire first round. Now that first left hook he shook off, but this one he doesn't sh shake off, Duke. Well, here's the knockdown, and he was reaching, and that's when Dewey timed him perfect with that left hand. He caught him coming in. Here's the second replay. Here again, he's reaching, hands are down. Here comes Dewey, over the top, right on that jawbone. Nice knockdown. Just the right spot back, just below the ear, way back on the jaw. You saw his knees buckle, clean knockdown. Tough mountain to overcome for Fujimoto. That knockdown. I see Fujimoto's only chance of winning the fight is to not box with Dewey. He's got to get in there and use more karate techniques. He's got to hit from the outside with the kicks, possibly the knees. Dewey controls the boxing game right now in this match. What I don't want to see from Dewey Cooper is to clam up and rest on the laurels of that knockdown. And he should not underestimate Fujimoto. 
That looks like he's got a couple of cantaloupes in his calves he stuffed in there. He's got some strong legs. <laughs> no. I'll tell you, he's got one of the strongest roundhouse kicks I've seen in the K-1 tournament. It's got enough to break your arm if he hits it just right. Four in a row. Oh, no, no. do we get the shake going? A little showboating and <laughs> That's a lot of gonna... courage to do that to a guy like Fujimoto. That's not going to play in Kyoto. Especially the Sadokan Kai style of, of training. These guys break baseball bats with their shins to get ready for fights. Yeah, they don't like being insulted. Fujimoto relying almost exclusively on his right seven. leg roundhouse kick. That is seven he's thrown against Dewey no, Cooper. No, no. Let's go. One seven. after another, but you know, yep. it's, uh, it's a good strategy. Well, well, with that shin bone hitting those arms, he's going to stop him from punching, and he's going to feel that. It looks like Dewey's arms are hurt a little bit. Dewey needs to get on his jab and get on the bicycle. And Not coincidentally, the, the, the body part that Fujimoto's working on is that left arm that caused the knockdown. Not a good idea to do the taunting. It seems he ignited a fire with Fujimoto. He's into double on, figures now on the kicks is Fujimoto. His leg looks like it's been through a blender once or twice, but he is dishing out the punishment. And he He's, certainly isn't worried about any uh, sore shins. No. He's hit every everything on Dewey Cooper's left side of his body. Fujimoto is sending those air express from Osaka. He's, <laughs> he's kicking out well. Guess who stopped dancing? Dewey Cooper. Well, if Dewey could time that, he needs to use the right hook to step in. He could possibly clip him with his right hook while he's kicking to try and drop Let's him. Let's go! Fight! I'll tell you what, Dewey Cooper took a right leg roundhouse kick a moment ago underneath the left elbow, and you can see the pain in his face, and he is keeping his left side away from Fujimoto now. of strategy here in round number two. This is a great fight. Good contrast in style. What a round. Did he overcome the knockdown there in round number two? I, I think he did. He knew he needed to pick up some, some points, uh, press the judges, and get the steam going. I like that strategy of the roundhouse kicks. I think it was a good move. I think he's even things up or at least narrowed the gap. What do you think, dude? Definitely. Here's the type of kicking that Fujimoto is unleashing. That's all shin bone across the forearm. You can easily break your forearm with one of those kicks. The shin is stronger than the forearm. I'm sure that may have been part of the strategy. He didn't want any more left hooks from Dewey Cooper. There's another one. Beautiful kick. Those are painful. It stops you from boxing. Because if you try and punch, you're going to eat it like that, right in the ribs. Nice right hand. He changed it up. Here's how he finishes the round now. Another right hand. And, and, and then he gets back to the kicks to close it out. Great round from Fujimoto. You notice the left, the straight left by Cooper at the end of that round did not have the steam on it that we saw in the first round. Well, this one could be very even. That first round knockdown by Dewey Cooper and then Fujimoto's barrage of kicks in round number two. Well, this is a fun tournament tonight. A lot of the younger fighters are opening up a little bit more. They're just letting it go. They don't care about their second match. I'm liking it. Cooper is sick of getting kicked by Fujimoto. Cooper undoubtedly was told oh. about this round. Oh, what a punch by Fujimoto. Now Cooper's looking for the kicks, and Fujimoto's going to the hands. Joey Cooper now fighting back. Cooper is tired. He cannot hold his arms up where he wants. That left arm keeps dropping. He doesn't have the steam in it anymore. Those kicks have taken their toll. Dewey needs to keep doing that. Come forward. If he comes forward, he's going to not let Fujimoto have the room to unleash those brutal kicks. He needs to come forward. Don't move back. He gives him more room to start punting him. He's going to kick his arm through the goalpost to heaven real soon. He's going to unleash that thing. I'm waiting for Fujimoto to fake the right, le right leg roundhouse. He's going to be in the third right row. Because Dewey is dropping that left arm. I don't know if Dewey's got the power to knock down Fujimoto again. A little shoe shine from Fujimoto. This is where the weight difference starts to take effect as well. Oh, Good luck by left. Fujimoto. Another one. Now the crowd begins to get behind 
Fujimoto. I think both these fighters have said, I don't care about the rest of this tournament, I'm winning this fight. This is K-1 at its best, though. When guys just let it go, K-1 is awesome. Warning! Warning! Let's go! <coughs> Warning by Cecil Peoples. I believe it was for grabbing the leg. I'm not sure. Let's go! Trey Lewis, no one! Fight! Let's go! Fight! Well, we're into the last minute or so of this third round. This could tell the entire story. Oh, big right hand by Fujimoto. Had, had a little more on it, may have taken Dewey down. Fujimoto kicked another field goal there. He's letting those kicks go beautifully. Uh, good right hand to the forehead of Cooper. Cooper starting to glaze over. Let's say forget the knockdown in round one. Fujimoto's winning this fight at this point. Dewey's always dangerous with those hands. Always. He's turning it on nice. Good knee. He needs every precious second. Second one. He's only I'll got ten left. Is it is it oh, nice right hand, hand by Fujimoto. Dewey's turning it on, though. Oh, good oh. kick. Oh, another kick. Three kicks in a row. Oh, what a fight. Cooper and Fujimoto finish out in a hurricane of punches. Look at this place. They've got this place going wild. They're electric. This is awesome. And nobody knows who won this fight yet. Well, let's take a poll. I say Fujimoto by a half point. Lon? I think you're right. Duke? I think we're going to third round. Dewey Cooper. Fujimoto. What a flurry near the end. Both fighters going for the knockout. That left round, that uh, left leg roundhouse kick may have won the fight for Fujimoto. Next round, okay. Just a masterful performance. Can't say enough about this Japanese fighter. Just would not quit. You ever had a guy like that in the ring do it with you? It just couldn't, couldn't get him to stop. Here's another look. I tell you, this guy Fujimoto, one kick, he's off balance, throws the left, he throws the right, he throws the left. These Sato Kaikon guys, their hearts are so big. The way they train in Japan, there's no quit. Uh, whenever you fight a Japanese fighter, you're always in for a tough fight. But well, there was so much offense there, and there was no room for Dewey Cooper to attack. And then, finally, Yusuke Fujimoto just tied him up, ending that one stretch. My first fight in Japan, I fought a fighter by the name of Tanaka. I hit the guy with everything. The kitchen sink, I hit him with so many laps, he begged for a right, and he couldn't quit. These Japanese guys are tough. I love their moxie. Ladies and gentlemen, after three great K-1 rounds, we go to the scorecards. Jeff Mullen scores the contest 28-28. He has it even. John Shorley scores it 29 to 28 and a half. Dolby Shirley scores it 29 to 28 and a half. For the winner by, uh, pardon me, majority decision, Yusuke Fujimoto. No surprise now. Now that we've seen him fight, no surprise, Mike Sawyer. That, that was a fabulous fight, and, Fu and Fujimoto deserves to win it. Lon. Ladies and gentlemen, another close quarterfinal match. A round of applause. exerted a lot of energy in their first fights.